You know, the stories we tell determine what we do. Stories like, I'm going to put a man on the moon, <clears throat> or stories of nonviolent protest. And to make care safe, we need to tell a few new stories. The first is that harm is preventable rather than inevitable. Too often clinicians, including myself, just accept harm as the inevitable cost of care we de deliver. Second, we need to say safety has to be based on the design of safe systems, not on the heroism of our clinicians. If you look at what our clinicians have to do to keep care safe, it's appalling. They have to remember hundreds of things to do every day. They work with clunky and clumsy technology that doesn't talk to them. We need to design safe systems. And third, we need to tell a story of collaboration that no one group is going to do this alone. The regulators can't do it. The vendors can't do it. The community, the hospitals can't do it. But together, we can move a mountain. Well, I think we need forums like WISH that bring leaders together and number one, declare that what we have right now is unacceptable. You know, if you think about the magnitude of the patient safety problem, uh, we don't know how big it is, but some estimates have it perhaps up to the third leading cause of death. But in any other industry, if planes were crashing every day, Airlines would shut down, they would all come together, they would do a systematic solution to fix the problem. We don't have that in, in healthcare. What we have is planes crashing every day and we maybe have a paper checklist and say try to remember this or here's five checklists and try to remember that. We haven't come together to design a safe system and we need to. And there's other industries that have. I think the main reason is we haven't viewed healthcare delivery as a science. You see, in, in developed world, science is finding new genes, science is finding new drugs. But how we apply those therapies, how we organize care, oh, that's just the art of medicine. And we haven't brought that same discipline to how we organize. Now, the disciplines to do that aren't genetics or pharmacology, they're sociology and psychology and engineering and computer science. And we need to bring those all together to begin to design safer systems. One really concrete thing that the UK or the US could do is start setting up learning labs, set up places that bring together those diverse scientists so they could design solutions t t together because no one discipline is going to solve this problem. Indeed, the solution will be found at the intersections of disciplines. But to get those disciplines to work together, you need to learn their language. You know, an ethnographer is not going to talk to an engineer unless they learn and respect each other's language. So creating labs for them to work in is absolutely key. One of the causes of harm are catheter infection. Now, to put these into perspective, in the US, these infections, and probably around the world, kill as many people as breast or prostate cancer. So, no little trivial problem. And when we went to reduce those infections, we went to the guidelines from the Centers for Disease Control, and those guidelines are elegant, they're scholarly, but they're not very helpful at the bedside because they're nearly 200 pages long, and they recommend 90 things to do. And as a busy clinician, I'm lucky if I can do three things. So we called out from the guideline a simple five item checklist that clinicians need to do every time. And we made the supplies available for them to do it. And we got doctors and nurses to work together to question each other to make sure, sh sure that they did it. And we fed them back performance measures. So what we did in a kind of superficial way, we did a system solution, right? Where we designed technologies, we changed culture, we gave feedback. And across the US and in many other countries, those infections are down 80%. Again, this is a problem the size of breast cancer that we believe there's a cure for. Not by heroism though, by system design. But the reality is those infections are only one of dozens of harms patients suffer. And every harm has its own checklist and every checklist has five or 10 items, and every item may need to be done three or four times a day. So you add it up, and we would expect our clinicians 
to do 150 things every day. And there's no display if they did them or not. We need to serve better technologies to our clinicians and our patients. But WISH is absolutely critical because we need global forums that bring diverse disciplines and care settings together to collectively pool our wisdom to design solutions. What we've seen in so often is there is a solution out there it just not be, it might not be invisible. And in other words, we have a really inefficient knowledge market that someone knows the information, but it just not might not be there. And it may not be in healthcare. It may be in aviation or energy or the nuclear industry, but there's a kernel of truth. And what we need to do is call that out and see how it applies to other settings and then spread it. <music>